Hello everyone, Kurt Olfer here and welcome back to another episode from Whole Federal Labs. Today we're going to be going on into the next phase of Fiori and we're going to be looking at the 8th Master Dagger plays. 8th uh, Master is, um, ironically, a revisitation, in my opinion, to 6th Master Concepts. Uh, if you remember, we talked about how that is that using a Mesoport Fair, where essentially we're not cross or anything like this, but we have a dagger in our hands here, thumbs in board, and we have that Mesoport Fair uh, doubled stance that we're utilizing to cover and utilize that kind of shape to stop incoming blows. Um, this time, however, we are looking at the immediate actions that come off of 8th Master and how they are off that covering right here and what we can do of it and what are some considerations that we see immediately that allow us to kind of get to activate the dagger and why these things maybe work into it. So with that being the case here, let's get into it. Okay, this week we're here we're going to look at the 8th Master cover play. And we've already kind of talked about this a little bit when we were talking about Sixth Master, which is, it's interesting to me why that happens in this way where you, you he talks about how you can make those covers in all directions with that Sixth Master cover, but then he talks about the lower line positions. That tells me, perhaps, it makes me think about the last previous videos, that what he was saying this right here, he's talking about all upper and side guards, whereas if it comes from below, now we're going to start talking about the ways of dealing with this. Eighth master itself to me is, is interesting because essentially I think you're talking, you're, once again, you're talking about that low line thrust into the guts and later plays will show not just dagger, but also wrists. And he talks about how you can make different types of crossings onto those pieces. Okay. So the way we see right here, the image we see here is this. And again, this just looks like, in my opinion, so if you make some Mandrito shot from above, this looks like this kind of concept right here where I've come up with that six master, but instead we're coming down into this position here. Now, an interesting thing that I think is that it should be noted on this is Fury is not going right for the wrist in the image. Now, I, I, whether that means don't go for the dagger or anything like here, I'm not going to sit there and him and haw on it. What I think this is showing here is the dagger shoots in. If I come out with this right here and he's coming up into my guts, I'm going to utilize as much of this space as possible to find, ride, and go to the wrist. So that's a big part about this. Don't just go to the wrist. Because if he's really long and he tags me faster, so yeah, I hit his arm, but he also stabbed me first. So with the 8th Master concept cover, shot comes in, I'm filling the space. If this rides in this way, and here's it comes a gut shot, I'm coming in here, it rides into the wrist. So I'm, he, I, what I think he's saying is to utilize all of this space right here, catch as much as possible so that you can control on the person's wrist. Now, big thing about that right here is, again, how we get to that play. It could be very much you're pulling this thing out here and I shoot into this, right? It could be we're in a tag up position right here. I've grabbed it and he's, he's swatting at me with that dagger and I'm pushing him off right here and I eventually get him out and move into that position. Uh, that right there is actually the first play that he says about this is I can use, I can take your take hold of your right hand. He says with his right hand, however, I, I don't know, but I think it might be a, uh, a typo on his part, is that by coming in this way right here, I'm going to take hold of his right hand right here so I can turn him and go into the chest and everything else. Also remember, you can also apply other disarms from this position. I talked about Faulkner and one of the dagger plays that he had. Remember, I don't think it's just one and done here. Shot comes in, boom, grab the wrist, I can shoot this thing off, and now I'm right here in the position, stab, 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 stab. We're utilizing that hand to push down and shift through. So again, in position, here, grab the wrist, I can go right to the chest. Because his arm's extended, I have two hands on my arm, I'm in a stronger position. Cross, and I can go right into this here, area here. But again, for me, I come right here, shift this up, Stick him in the chest because the reality is I don't want him to come back from it. Okay, so eighth master again is is it's not necessarily a very intense piece right here. Well, I'm sorry, the Sultania line is always very intense. Um, but what makes it interesting is in this case right here because we're not long, we're not just talking about coming above and working the outside here. We're talking about now we deal with that low position. Um, remember for the sixth master we have we came over top and we started to make sure that the dagger worked away. It's a similar concept. So six master dagger comes in, high shot from above. From here, we are talking about how he comes over top this way. Digging the bicep, as I strip this, the dagger goes away from me in position. So ultimately, this is wood, and it still sucks to have it on your foot, but if it's metal, 
that's a real bad day. So that's where, like, as things fall off of people, the idea to clear it away from you is very important in this period of time because it's not just a LARP tool. It's a metal piece of stick, you know, a, a, a metal death sticker. So from that context from above, in above here, here's your six master cover, right? From below, which is why I think he's trying to take this right here, pops in, shifts off in here. I can grab this wrist. And what am I doing here? I'm turning the blade away from him so I can keep, I can work with this into that space. I want to get this away and then go into his chest. So again, shot comes in, boom, grab. From here, I push, turn, roll right into his chest and start mashing guts. It's a big part about this right here. Again, where does the dagger go? It doesn't come to me. It goes away. It actually goes in a way right here where it's actually more detrimental to him than it is to me. Again, this is a person right here. Well, not Connor. The, who he represents is a person that I don't care about. You've just assaulted me with a dagger, a Rondell dagger that you're contending with. Okay? And you got to think here, when it comes down to armor and other places in your room, we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. If this guy's in armor right here, well, one, this shot right here is going to mean nothing. Because as, as soon as he hits us with armor, he's going right back into retracting. Other things right here, or he's pushing my elbow, because this isn't hurt. So coming down and sliding through on that to really drive that weight and then to come into this is what I think he's really trying to convey with this. This is a weight thing. You're not just dropping it. You're going into it with a, with a long press and then seizing. That right there is going to be a big key indicator for later techniques where you talk about, you like, Daggers between the leg. It's about drawing the person downward into a space. Connor's arm does not weigh more than me. So if he comes in with this with a low shot, if I'm sitting here with this all, he can he can move in everything else. But the moment I drop my weight, I can pull him. So if I put myself into the position where I drop into this, like lower myself down, I can shift into that. With a dagger, where I haven't grabbed that yet. I can sit here now, drop the weight, and now I have the space to work, to mash this out, or any other concept to be able to work against him. And that's just the introduction to Eighth Master. Again, really, really simple, very easy, um, but it has a lot to do with shifting weight, shifting direction, so that we have different forms and avenues of approach that allow us to get the dagger out of their hand and us into play. So you can see with the video, again, we're talking about that Mesoportifera doubled. We're moving in with this to create that kind of stop. Now, interestingly enough, because of the image, one of the things that, again, I kind of consider on this is that Fiori is not saying go right for the arm because that actually makes it so that the arm is a lot more prevalent to deal with. He is choosing to parry or use the arms in such a form or fashion here where the dagger kind of rides into the rondelle. Now, that could be just me looking at the image right here. However, as you saw, there's a point in time where he stuck at me, uh, where Connor stuck at me, and it still touched me by going to his forearm. By riding down the dagger right here, you're, you're going into the trajectory of that low line thrust. By, ri by riding that down, there's a lot more agency to be able to control that and, and then from that point be able to seize the hand in that lower quarter section. Uh, the Sotani is a, the Sotani line, as I call it, uh, that low line thrust that we see within Fiori's Dagger Manuscript is incredibly, incredibly dangerous. It's visceral. There's so much stuff in there that is very hard to contend with if you don't have a means of covering it. Um, I work with someone extensively who is significantly shorter than me, and this is their go-to. So as a taller person, all of this real estate here is much more open to them and it's harder for me to contend with because I have to drop down to meet them. Um, so when trying to try to employ things like this against them, it's very difficult because at the end of the day, when I make that shape to kind of cover right there, I'm already putting my weight down, which gives them access to other places. So I have to constantly consider where exactly am I working at against them. Um, again, the big thing about this right here is it's about control. It's about being able to put the weight into something, drop the weight into a position right here where I stop the arm into contending against them, and then being able to work off of that. Eighth Master has got um, quite a bit in there in regards to how you, you, you're, you're slow, doing a lower stifling action, which allows you to get different things here. And it's very interesting and unique because it doesn't just do with the dagger, it also does with the bare hands, which we'll see in, uh, uh, in, in future videos. But again, this right here, not a, not a lot, not very complicated. However, again, when you're talking about a low line thrust, stifling the action and being able to control the person that's coming into that low area, 
this reach from below is easier to get under. And again, that pushing down to kind of stifle that action and get the dagger away from you, to me, is a bigger portion of the lesson of this and not just, okay, I make this cover here and go for it. So that's going to conclude what we got here for this video. Again, not a complicated situation here. And we've already talked a little bit about this when we looked at our six master plays right here and how we utilize Mezzoporte Ferro doubled against an assailant. Um, again, if you remember, we talked in there how like some of these right here doesn't make sense. So, you know, from, I can make all these covers and I can do all the plays that he was suggesting there. But the low line one, I couldn't get it to work the way there because the arm's different. And I believe that that's probably why he's doing this in the eighth master section is that, yeah, you can cover that in the sixth master. But the reality is you'd shift to the eighth master. Remember, these are not just like, okay, what's my checklist? No, these are all just ways we know how to anatomically destroy the senio of somebody, take the weapon out of their hand, remember, take the dagger away, strike them, break the arm, bind the arm, and throw them to the ground. Uh, so these are just ways of being able to attack that kind of focus area. So again, that's going to do it for this video right here. Thank you so much to my subscribers and people that have tuned in right here. Again, your comments are always welcome. Love hearing what you have to say out there. Please continue to have them come in. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, share with a friend. Don't forget, hit the bell. I drop content every week here, and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to do more with that. Uh, lots going on with the life right now. I'm just trying to make sure that I can do more of this as much as possible. Uh, and again, wanting to grow this right here, and this is not possible without viewers like you. So with that being the case, everybody, as always, until next time, please stay safe out there, train well, and fight on. I'll see you all soon.